Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Eliza Fi Creative. I know it's been so long since my last post. I'm so sorry. Life has just been so crazy. I'm going to try and get back into YouTube though and make it a priority. So yeah, I love making these tutorials for you guys. Thank you so much for all of the support the last few months. The crazy amount of subscribers I've been getting, the all the love on the videos, just the comments, everything. I'm so blown away with all the support. So thank you so much for being here. I love making these videos. Um, so yeah, if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you've seen that I have a speed art video of this design. And within that video, I have created boxes in order to distribute the text evenly. There is way better ways to do that. I have been doing this for five years and I'm still learning so much in Illustrator. It is such a big program that I don't know all the tools. So I'm still learning along with you guys this program. I love Illustrator, but there is so much to learn. So in this tutorial, I'm actually going to be teaching Snap to Grid. Like I said, I'm still learning. So please bear with me during this tutorial. It's not perfect. But yeah, before I get started though, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and let's get right into it. All right, so I'm just starting fresh here with a new canvas. I'm going to keep my design to the side for reference. I am going to measure the distance from one side of the letter, the space between the letter, and then the other side of the letter. This will give me the number for my grid so I can actually create pixel perfect art pretty much. Um, if you're doing a different type of design, it might be different for you, but this is just my process. There's probably another way to measure the distance between my letters. Like I said, I'm still learning Illustrator. So I'm doing it like this right now. This is easiest for me at the moment. So what I'm doing is just creating a box and measuring from one side of the letter to the other side of the other letter and then getting that measurement. And I'm going to click that box and then copy the measurement. I'm then going to clear my canvas just so everything's out of the way. I'm then going to go up to the left hand side where it says Illustrator and then I'm going to go to Preferences and then guides and grid. Once that opens, you can put in the amount that you copied from your box where it says grid line every. So what that means is every section of your grid is gonna be that exact same amount. So once I hit okay, you'll see what I mean in a minute, but you can go in here and change the color of the grids. You can change the dots. You can pretty much change any settings. And then it also says subdivisions. I've put the number five. It works best for this design for me, but you can choose whatever you'd like. I'm now going to go up to view and then show grid. And then if you notice your grid has darker lines, the distance between one dark line to the next dark line is the measurement that we just put into the preference settings. I hope that makes sense. Now it's time for the fun part, the designing. So. I'm going to type out my text and I'm using a font from defont.com. I will link that down below in the description. I actually really like this font a lot. I'm going to change the A and the X to a capital letter. I think it looks cooler. It works really well for my design. Um, once I'm done that, I'm going to go up to object, expand, and outline the font. You can also hit command O on your keyboard if that works for you. I'm then going to ungroup everything. So I'm gonna right click and then hit ungroup. I'm then going to zoom in just so I can see my graph a little bit better. So I also want to make everything the same size, but then I also have to keep in mind that I need to have at least one box between each letter. And then I also have to think about the box that each letter is gonna sit in. So what I mean by that is I'm going to resize these letters so that I have three squares taking up a letter and then two squares where one is the space and then one is the letter itself. So, so I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm just going to align my C with the top of that one darker line there and then to the left there you can see I have the other darker line. So I'm just going to 
line it up and if you can see I've taken up three spots with this letter C and I'm just gonna make sure that it's exactly to that line but now that I have resized my letters I'm going to just move these ones out of the way just so I can start playing around with the C I'm then going to move it up just so I can put it on a line that I think is best I'm then going to go up to view and then snap to grid and then I'm going to hit the A on my keyboard to select the direct select tool or you can hit the white arrow on the left hand side there. I'm then going to swipe over the area that I want to change using the direct select tool. And then if I zoom in here, you'll see that there are anchor points that are fully colored blue. And then on the top part of the C, you'll see there's anchor points that have white with a blue outline. Those are not selected. So if I zoom back out, I can move just the bottom area of the letter C that I have selected with my direct select tool. So if I hit one of the anchor points with my mouse and then hit shift and then pull down with the mouse, that will just move the area that I selected. You can see that it's starting to snap to the grid as I move the letter C, the letter down. So I'm going to move the letter H where I want it to sit. So in the design, I wanted it to sit in between the tail of the two C's. And then I want the top of the letter H, the hump part, and then the cross of the A to align exactly. So I'm just going to place the A here and use this line as a reference. So I'm going to swipe over the part of the H that needs to move down using the direct select tool just like I did on the letter C and I'm hitting shift and then moving down and as you see it's the snap to grid is snapping it to those lines to make it even and then using the direct select tool again I'm going to swipe over the bottom of the H to align it with the bottom of the C and sometimes you have to use your up or down arrow keys just to move the anchor points up or down because sometimes the snap to grid just jumps to the bottom line just like it did here so if you hit the arrow up key it will align to the bottom of the C and then I'm going to move the I to where I want it to be I just want to make a couple notes here so as you can see from the left side of the C to the right side of the H I have aligned them exactly to the to the distance between the darker lines of the grid and those distance between the lines is what we put into our preference settings. I hope that makes sense. So now that I have that part of the design finished I'm going to bring in the L and like I said earlier I wanted one square in between each letter to make it even so the snap to grid is bringing in the L and putting it in the correct spot where it's supposed to be and then I'm going to use the direct select tool and extend the L just like all the other letters. Now that I have my L set up, I'm going to swipe over the little nub on the A. And then when you do that, in the top somewhere, you will see a pen tool with a minus sign that just gets rid of the anchor point. So click that and you will get rid of that little nub. As I move the A into place, the snap to grid will snap it to where it needs to be. And then I want the top of the cross and the A to match the hump of the H. So if I zoom into the H, you can see that it's not aligning correctly to the grid like I want it to. So I will fix that later. I'm going to swipe over the bottom of the A and move that cross down and align it to the line that I want to match the H with. And then I will move the bottom of the A down to match the L. With the X, I also want to align the middle part with the A and the H, just to give it that um, balance within the design. So I'm just going to swipe across pretty much the entire part of the X, except for the top, and then click with my mouse and pull it down. and. It will snap to the grid, but it's not snapping to where I want it to sit. So I will fix that at the end after everything is completed. I will show you how to do that. 
I'm just going to swipe the bottom part of the X and bring it down and just tab up once with my arrow keys. So now I'm going to go back up to view and I'm going to scroll down to snap to grid and click that to turn it off. I'm then just using my direct select tool and I'm going to zoom in to move that X down a bit so it's in line with the A and the H. And then I'm just going to go over everything to make sure that everything is lined up correctly and nothing's out of place. So after I've fixed everything, I'm going to go up to view and then select hide grid. I'm then going to swipe and select everything and then go up to object, compound path and make. I'm then going to resize it to my liking against the artboard. Then selecting eye or clicking the eyedropper tool on the left hand side, I'm going to eyedropper the middle purple color. So while my design is selected, I'm going to duplicate it because we're going to be using the blend tool. So what I did was hit command C and command F to paste in front. I'm then going to select that front layer and I'm going to I use my eyedropper tool and select that darker purple. I'm then going to select that top layer again, so the darker purple, and I'm just going to move it to the left and up a bit to give it a bit of like a 3D type of look. So we're going to use the blend tool, so we're going to select both layers. I'm going to go up to object and then blend and make. I'm then going to go back to object while it's still selected. And then I'm going to go back to blend and then click blend options. And then I'm going to change the specified steps and I'm just putting 100. I want it to be a smooth transition between the colors. I then want to look in my blend layers on the right hand side and select the top layer in the blend layer and copy it. So I'm selecting it and then hitting command C and command F to paste in front. And then we're going to drag it out of the blend layer. So your layers should look something like this. And then I'm going to create a box for the background. So just using my marquee tool, I'm going to make a 15 inch by 15 inch box and align it to the artboard. I'm then going to use my eyedropper tool and use that lighter purple as the color. And then I'm going to make it go to the back of all of the layers. So I'm just going to hit right key on my mouse and then hit arrange and send to back. As you can see, I have this like drop shadow sort of look. You can make it more pronounced if you'd like. So if you go into the blend layers, you can select that bottom layer. And then using the select tool, you can move around that object to make it more pronounced or smaller or bigger or whatever you want. So I'm liking how this is looking right now, but I want to make the drop shadow look a little bit darker. So what I'm doing is selecting that top layer in the blend tool, and then I'm finding my color picker, and I'm just going to find a darker purple, almost black sort of. I will put the color that I used for that down below my color palette I have here for you. So if you want to use it, you can. Well, that's the end of the tutorial, and I realized that I forgot to move the H to match the A and the X, and I am very sorry for not showing that. All you have to do is make sure that your Snap to Grid is turned off, so you go to View and then click Snap to Grid to turn it off, and then you swipe over the part of the H with the Direct Select tool and move it up to match the A and the X. In my original design, it is correct. I am very sorry for not showing that. But if you've watched this far, thank you so much for watching my video and all the support on my channel. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I'll put all my